certain point when rates have to start going back up uh, in the United States. What happens to property prices in Asia, in China uh, in particular, which has really been, been helping to drive this economy, Singapore, Hong Kong, and, and, and the Asian economy overall? What would that look like, considering that the collapse of property was what caused the crisis just a few years ago? Yeah, I think that every big downturn is uh, due to property bust. Now, uh, uh, what, what China is different from Hong Kong. China has a supply problem. So this is why China's property, uh, property market is uh, turned. And uh, the Beijing and Shanghai's land sales revenue last year were dropped, dropped by about one third. And uh, nationwide, uh, the, the land sales revenue, revenue dropped around by half. I think that in a lot of tier three cities already down. But in Hong Kong, it's really uh, driven by the U.S. interest rate because of mm -hmm. the currency pair. And Singapore as well, right? Yeah, yeah, that's so, right. so what does it look like when, when those bubbles deflate, if they deflate? Usually the prices drop at least by half, right? So what, what do you, what, when, in, a, in, a, half. in a bubble situation, you have a rental yield drops to like 2%. And that's what we're seeing now in Hong Kong and, uh, yeah, and Singapore. But uh, when, the, when the adjustment happens, it, it, it has to go back to 5 or 6 percent. That's what, what we have experienced in the past. So does it look like the crisis in the U.S. in 2007, or is it more like 1998? I think that uh, the, uh, uh, in, in the U.S., there was a supply issue, uh, too, of overbuilding. Uh, in Hong Kong and, 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 and Singapore, very much about interest rate. So it's, very, it's going to be similar to 1998. Uh, Andy, you call the Chinese mm -hmm. property market a smokescreen, really to confuse speculators. And uh, myself, I'm a little bit confused about the Chinese property right, market right. because we are seeing signs of a revival, but the government comments say the opposite thing, that their curbs and restrictions are going to be kept in place. Um, could you break it down for us, help explain it? I think that uh, the, the, the central government is trying to strike a balance because the local governments really depend on land sales for, uh, uh, to, to make a living. Uh, so, uh, in the last uh, this uh, revival, it's really driven by uh, state-owned enterprises uh, buying land. So, the, the state-owned enterprises buying land is like uh, shifting money from one pocket to another. It's the shifting from the state-owned enterprise to, to local governments. Okay, and this relates to the Chinese recovery, right? And there's a lot of bulls. The course of bulls is growing about China's economic recovery. But you say that the recent recovery is probably just perception fueled by misleading statistics. Which do you think are those misleading ones? I think that... Uh, uh, to read the Chinese economy, you need to read uh, the, uh, the, the listed company's uh, uh, results. And the, the, their, their uh, top line is very much is similar to the uh, nominal GDP growth rate. So that's sort of uh, what we've seen is that uh, uh, few companies have seen growth. And uh, what, we, what I could see on the ground is that in the last three months, uh, the, the manufacturing stabilized mm -hmm. because of the uh, pickup in exports and also the uh, infrastructure investment uh, in, in the railroad sector. But in terms of overall, the growth is uh, very, still very low. But are you saying you don't trust the numbers from China? I think that the, uh, 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 the, uh, the statistics in China is spotty. It's, it's a spotty. It collects from uh, local governments and local governments uh, uh, make uh, you, you uh, report the numbers based on what they want to report. So the, for the central government, it's always uh, very difficult to how to read the, all these numbers. So they, they sometimes they make arbitrary adjustments. So the, uh, the, uh, what are the Statistics Bureau reports is different from what are the local governments report. You, if we put all the numbers together, right? So the adjustment is really, uh, really arbitrary. So Andy, back to uh, the Chinese property market, you think prices are going to have right in some places already uh, on some already, places already. already okay here's the thing though this is uh front page of the ft uh today just below the fold so boom. <laughs> we've got uh, a land auction in a suburb in beijing uh sold this week for a billion renminbi that's about 500 percent more than the starting price and it's got a lot of people thinking maybe property is heating yeah. back up again. First, uh, first no, is uh, the, you, you, can, uh, the you cannot or? look at the total amount, um, amount right? The, yeah. This is uh, you have to look at the unit price. It's uh, it's actually it's not uh, it's uh, it's not close to the peak. Ah. The second the, first, the second is that this is a small steel enterprise based in Beijing. So yeah. the, the 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 steel enterprises uh, the the way they, they bid. Uh, influenced by by the government. Okay. The third is that it's Beijing. Beijing would be the 
the last market to fall because ah. of the, all the great money in China uh, goes to Beijing first. And okay. This is very much Beijing's property market is always driven by anti-corruption okay. campaign. All right, like it a lot. We'll talk more about great money when we continue with Andy Shea plus our chartman Daryl Guppy from GuppyTraders.com. Don't go away.